Okay guys, today we are going to be rebuilding a carburetor on a Baldor Power Chief PC50H 5000 watt generator. Um, it is a Honda GX270 9 horse power motor. Um, first thing we're going to do is take the air filter assembly off. I've already done that. It's a wing nut. Take the cover off. Another wing knot, take the air filter off. No big deal. Pretty simple, easy peasy. All right, so now we've got a 10 millimeter here, right here, 10 millimeter here, and there's another one back up in here, 10 millimeter right there. It's on top of your air filter. Take those three 10 millimeters off. See the old air filter material, it just crumbled. This thing's been sitting forever. Um, the customer brought it in, it was frozen solid. The video before this, I did the repair on, you know, it being frozen solid. Um, in the description below, I'll have all the, the parts you'll need for this, this uh, carburetor job. Um, there's a full tune-up kit that I'll put in there. It's got everything you'll ever need for this recoil, coil, carburetor, um, spark plug, air filters. It's got a pile of everything in there. Super cheap. All right. So now take those three 10 millimeters off. So then you're going to turn uh, the fuel to the off position, choke the on position, and pull this straight out. Should come straight out. You get both hands on this thing. She's stuck. I just had to wiggle her back and forth until she came pulling out. No big deal. Um, there is a gasket right here. Pull that off. Choke arm. Pull it off. Just pull straight up. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the fuel line and drain all the gas. Just drain all the gas out. You're going to want to clean the gas tank. Once you're done draining the gas out, pull the carburetor out to about this far. You see where the studs it comes out to about this far. And then you can turn the throttle all the way up and push it straight up. All right, so when we get that out, throttle off, this comes straight out. And now we can rebuild the carburetor. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so 10 millimeter, take this bolt right here on the bottom of the carburetor off. Um, leave this gasket on. Don't anything you don't have to touch. Don't touch. So don't take that off. If you break it, then you, you're gonna have to order new gaskets. Just leave it right on there. Yeah, this thing sat for a long time. It's black in there. All right, uh, 10 millimeter right here. We're gonna take this off. If this strips out, you can use a pair of pliers, but I wouldn't even mess with it. If it if it strips, don't even bother with it. We'll rinse through the through this side and through where the needle goes we'll just rinse it out until it's good and cleaned out all right and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and pull this pin right here out you're gonna pull the float out you know see it's kind of sticking so what we're gonna do is just even pressure don't try to force it just even pressure it'll eventually give All tarred up and stuck. We're going to be cleaning the crap out of this stuff. Alright. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the idle screw out. We're trying to get to this piece here. This is idle circuit jet. So we're going to take this idle screw out. It's Phillips head or a flathead. And we're going to pop this plastic piece here off. Get it out of the way. And... This is the jet, the idle jet. Just gonna get the screwdriver in there. Oh, and we're gonna break it by throwing it all over the place. Ah, all right. It's easier with two hands when I'm trying to show you. But you just get it in there and you pry it and it, it'll come out. Um, I'm gonna need to hold the carburetor. Just pop right off and pops right out. So that's a jet inside that. It's actually all tarred up and solid. Um, it's supposed to be a hole. So if you didn't pull that out and clean it, it would surge like crazy. Now we're going to go ahead and pull 
the main jet out. We're going to try to. If this doesn't come out, we're going to clean it while it's in there. If it tries to strip or whatever. But we're going to try to get that out. I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver that's narrow enough to fit in there. This is like a 6-in-1 type of deal, but it's only 2-in-1. <laughs> three maybe one but uh you're gonna get that flathead in there if you don't have one like that that'll fit in just take your number two flathead screwdriver and then grind this side off and grind this side off to make it square instead of stepping out like that that way it'll fit right in see it wants to fit in there so you just got to take the sides down to where it fits in and this will work amazingly. So I'm going to try to get this thing to pop out. Unfortunately, this jet will not come out. So it doesn't matter. I boil it out with acid. This is 14 karat testing solution for 14 karat gold. It's got the green top. I've tried all the different kinds. This is the best one. Um, I've tried making my own acid. You got to be careful because, you know, too much muriatic and it'll melt the aluminum too much sulfuric and it'll eat the brass jet out i've tried everything i've made all the mistakes this stuff works the best i'll put it in the description super cheap one bottle to do 50 carburetors super cheap on, on amazon so just click the link in the description and that'll give you what you need so you're going to put a drop or two in the main jet Let it boil out. We're going to flip it up to get to the idle circuits. We're going to put a couple drops in that side, a couple drops in this side. We're going to use carb cleaner kicked it under the floor just a minute ago oh. and we're going to slowly rinse this out you don't want to get any acid in your eyes it'll blind you just don't freak out if you get in your eyes i have gotten in my eyes i can still see fine you just gotta get to the water supply and rinse your eyes out with water i suggest and strongly suggest Wearing safety goggles and safety gloves. Don't do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, we're going to want to do this jet with acid too. But it's got so much debris in it. I'm just going to give it a little hosing with carb cleaner first. Get some of that debris out of the way. There. Then we'll put a drop of acid in it. Um, some of them have a little brass jet in it. This one looks like it does not. But we're going to put some acid in it anyways. Um, I'm gonna, now I'm going to take and spray very hard through all these holes, these three holes here. Spray really hard. I'm going to have to use two hands, so I'm going to pause it. And is, if it's all spraying out through it real good, you're fine. Then we're just going to go ahead and rinse off the rest of the carburetor. Get all that tar... We're going to get all the tar out of this thing. may have to rub spots with the finger or a brush or something. Um, we're going to give everything else a pre-soak. We're going to get this carb cleaned up really good. All right, once you've got everything cleaned up, it's time for reassembly. We're going to go ahead. Let's see if I can't get this to balance somewhere. I need two hands. Oh, there, that'll work. So we're going to put this float. The needle valve stay in it. I didn't even take the needle valve out. Um, I just take the, the rubber tip and rub it in circular motion on my pants and make sure that the tip is nice and clean. Do a lot of rinsing with carb cleaner. All right, that's all the way in. We're going to take the pin. Oh, try not to lose parts. We're going to stick this pin through. I'm going to need two hands because I have to line this up. And get the pins here at the same time. Alright, let me go ahead and do that. Clean the bowl out. 
put it back on 10 millimeter tighten it down bowl scraped it out as good as we could um, notice I never took the bowl seal out I just left it there sometimes you pop these off the bowl seal will stay on the bowl just leave it there if you can um, you know the less you mess with the less it expands you know stuff like that so this drain we're gonna have point away from this guy here so we're gonna put it on like that and then we're gonna tighten the bolt down make sure you got that little red gasket on it oh bolt it's dirty still I rub it on my pants you can use whatever you need um, this is gonna need a little bit more that's real thick tar we're gonna rinse it out with carb cleaner and rub it off clean it off Get it nice and clean if you leave that tire bubble on there, what happens when you screw this in, it's right at that jet. The fresh gas will loosen it up, and then it'll suck right into the jet, and it's screwed. All right, so tighten that bolt right on now. That'll tighten your bolt right down. 10 millimeter. This is the idle jet. Um, spray through it really good. Make sure it sprays out these holes here. Sprays out of them. Sprays through, everything sprays through good. I'm going to pop it back in. There's a flat spot. You're going to line it up with that wall. Push it all the way down. Nice and tight. And you're going to take this little triangle looking one. Put it on top. Make sure it's all pushed down and tight. Like that. Nice and tight. And we're going to get the uh, idle screw. And this is a generator. It doesn't much matter where the idle screw is. But uh, if you do have an idle setting on whatever piece of equipment you're using that's got this, you're going to screw this all the way in tight. Bring your machine to idle. It'll be idling high, and you'll turn this out counterclockwise until you get to a good idle spot for this. For this application, we're going to put it at the halfway part, at the halfway mark. All right, now we already drained all the gas out. Um, I took an air hose to the gas tank and blew all of it out to make sure everything was blown out. But if you have to, you can stick a rag in the gas tank. Um, just leave the tip of the rag out like this much and let it soak up all whatever's left in there. You don't want any water or anything in there. And then pull the rag out, wring it out, and do it again, do it again, do it again until the tank's completely dry. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start putting this carburetor back on. The gasket's still good on the back. We never messed with it. Make sure there's a gasket between your engine and your carburetor. Very important. It will surge like crazy if there isn't. Um, we are going to have this out where the studs are, you know, like that. We are going to put this guy back in. It just sits in there and goes straight down. This spring hooks up right in here all right and this guy to go straight down it's wanting to go but it isn't going yet there it is it went in you don't want to pull on this too hard or you'll pull the governor loose so you really want to be gentle on this don't pull it too hard all right we got that in let's go ahead and put our fuel line back on further dump some gas in there make sure the fuel is this direction that is fuel on we want to make sure that no gas comes out of this mouth now we did just boil everything out with the acid so it's very clean but it's also very dry so sometimes the needle valve will stick open and this will leak all you do is take your ratchet and you just tap the bottom bolt and it, all of a sudden it'll stop dripping it'll just boop and you'll know that it's okay so if it does leak just tap that a few times, get it to stop dripping, and in your set. This one didn't even drip or nothing. It's fine. All right. So then we're going to go ahead and put our choke arm. Where I put that? Put our choke arm on. It's got that metal rod, um, and the hole goes like this. The metal rod sits in that. This sits on that hole, make sure that it's working. We're going to have them both facing this way. And then we're going to take this 
Make sure that this hole is pointing up like this. Put it on. Then we got this guy. See the hose came out this side. It goes right in that valve cover. If it comes out the other way, it'll it'll go back onto you know that nipple. No big deal. Um, we're gonna line this all up. all lined up I think I've got the choke the choke arm just needs to be pushed down a little bit there that's what we're working on right there get that hose in the back just push down into the valve cover just got that in there it should go back all the way now we're going to take the two 10 millimeter nuts, put them on nice and tight, and then you got the 10 millimeter bolt that goes back up there. We want to put the 10 millimeter bolt in as well. Too good. It won't shut off. It won't shut off. <laughs> <laughs> it's running too good. It won't shut off. All right. So we got some kind of ignition switch issue on this thing. Something's crapping in here. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, um, I could only let it run for a little bit. The smoke is because I had filled this with diesel. It was frozen up. So I have to drain the diesel out of the uh, oil now and put brand new oil in it and take it outside and we're going to start it and let it run, let the smoke stop. All right, I got new oil in it. We're going to see if she uh, lives or not. still good we might have a bad switch I'm not sure we're gonna figure that out I think that if I just plug this in let's see if we can do this but uh the smoke stopped we still got some burn off happening on the muffler but it's not smoking anymore this engine actually sounds amazingly well considering it was just frozen up you know three hours ago So I think it was just a bad uh, tip over switch, tip over sensor because I hooked up without it. So we're going to just go ahead and put all this back in here and just uh, no tip over sensor. I don't think they're going to be tipping this thing over anyways. Um, only thing that's left now is the air filters and air filter cover and she's ready to go. Alright guys, this helps you out in any way, shape or form. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'll put all the parts in the description below that you'll need for this. Today's t-shirt will be in the description below as well. If you want to do any advertising through my channel, message me. I'm more than happy to.
Peace. Hey, guys.